Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Classroom Champions Live, where we bring our athlete mentors directly into your home. So today, you guys, is Tasty Tuesday, and we have some awesome athletes for you today. But before that, I want to welcome you guys, and I want to invite you to join us in our eight-week challenge. You can still join the eight-week challenge. You can start at any time. There's activities every day, downloadables, and it's classroomchampions.org backslash eight-week challenge. Sign up. So join us for the eight-week challenge. But for today, we have some awesome athletes with us. Once again, I'm sure you guys remember Tiffany Parker. Tiffany is one of our Team USA bobsledders. Welcome, Tiffany. We're so happy to help have you back and to have you hosting another Tasty Tuesday. Hey, guys. What's up? And good morning, Lori. And good morning, Dylan. So glad to see you guys again. I am super excited about today. I have one of my very, very, very best friends on with us for Tasty Tuesdays. So let's go ahead and bring in Canadian bobsled athlete, Corey Hall. Hi, everyone. <laughs> nice to see you. So Corey, like I said before, amazing human being. She's from Vancouver, BC, has a degree in kinesiology and is a Canadian bobsled pilot. Corey also is a Team Canada national team athlete, as well as a bobsled 2019 world championship competitor, competing and training for the 2022 Winter Olympic Games as a hopeful. So super excited to have you on, Corey. Um, and I'm really excited to see what you get a chance to cook in the kitchen for the kids today. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited. I hope they like it. Of course. We'll bring up Dylan, who says, I love when Tiffany hosts Tasty Tuesday. Dylan, me too, you Dylan. Are, <laughs> you're going to be in store for some awesome things today. Um, and I'm really excited. I got a sneak peek on what Corey's making, and it looks pretty cool if you ask me. So we always talk about what healthy living looks like for you guys at home. And before I start, good morning, McKenna. <laughs> um, we talk about the mind and the body oh, and how you're... <laughs> so McKenna is in Kelowna, which is really close to where Corey is. So good morning, McKenna. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let you guys have your friendship love over that. It's fine. <laughs> I haven't been there, but I heard it's beautiful. So um, back to what I was saying, healthy living and what that looks like for you as an athlete. Um, it is very, very, very important to make sure that you are getting in those stoplight colors. So for everyone joining us in for the first time, the stoplight is gonna be those green light foods that are gonna be your fruits and your vegetables, the yellow light foods, which are gonna be your breads, your pastas, your rices that you're gonna eat as well. And then we pan to our favorite, the red light foods that you can eat ever so often. And we always ask the kids at home what their favorite red light snacks are. I'm excited to see what Corey's favorite red light snack is as we go a little bit longer into the show. But we want to make sure that you guys understand that it is very important, especially um, for us as athletes, to make sure that you're not just eating for your body, but you're eating for your mind. So that way you're able to stay focused. And same thing for you guys at home, making sure that while you're, some are still in school, that you're able to focus on your schoolwork and just interacting and making sure that you can do your very best. A lot of that is gonna come from the choices that you make that may be picking those green light foods and those yellow light foods and only having the red light foods every so often. So let's hop into Corey's kitchen and see what she's making for us today. Okay. Hold on, Tiff, but first I wanna see what Corey is working on staying focused for, right? I think we have a little video of her bobsledding, don't we? Oh, nice. <laughs> let's see. Let's see her video before we get into the kitchen. So, Corey, you could feel free to talk about where you are here and what's going on. Okay. So this is Whistler. This is my home track. And I actually have a guy on the back of my sled there because it was the final week of training. But here we go. So we're entering into corner one in Whistler, which is the steepest corner joined together. So that's two right there. So we pick up speed right away on this track. So I'm exiting corner two. And what makes Whistler a really special track is the track is so well maintained and so smooth. It just sounds so quiet when you're driving through it. So that's now corner four. And I'm coming out. Corner five, see how quick we're already through the next corner. This is corner six, transitioning into corner seven. 
And now I'm entering one of the most technical parts of the track. That was corner nine. And that's what sets you up for 10, 11, 12, 13. And actually an American bobsledder, Steve Holcomb, named this corner right here 50-50 because you have a 50-50 chance of coming out of it. And that's what makes it so technical. And in Whistler, we go about... On average, I'd say 146 kilometers per hour for women and men. I think the top speed now for a four-man bobsleigh is 156 kilometers per hour. Ooh. And that's the team Canada from this year. All my teammates. Wow, you guys are awesome. <laughs> I just have to say that. It's very fast. Okay. We're down the bobsled pretty quick. Uh, and so Whistler is cool. one of my favorite tracks. And I love that it has its name because it's so silent. It sounds like a whistle. Like it's, yeah. it is a really cool track. So thanks exactly. for walking through all of that. <laughs> all right. I'm going to let you guys take it away in Corey's kitchen now. Have fun, you guys. I'll come back okay. in a little bit. Thanks, Emily. Yeah. So, all Corey, right. talk to us a little bit about what you're going to be making for the kids at home today. So I have what's called ladybug treats. So what it takes is it takes a couple red apples. I mean, you can use any piece of fruit you want. It could be an orange, watermelon, whatever you have in, the, in your kitchen. And then I'm going to attach little, I have dried blueberries. The recipe calls for raisins. I don't really like raisins. So we're going to do dried blueberries. You take pretzel sticks. I mean, I saw on Google, though, people put noodles in as antennas. There's many different things you can use. And just some good old peanut butter to attach it. So I've already washed the fruit. Now, this part, depending on how capable you are in the kitchen, but feel free to get a parent or guardian to cut your apples for you. You just go into regular slices. So I'm going to go in the middle and then in between each side. Now I take a paring knife and I just scoop out the seeds in the middle and I'm going to keep them in order so they can be assembled like a ladybug, like the ladybug's wings. Here we go. Okay, all the dirty stuff is out. Let's just put that over there. Don't want that. <laughs> Okay, so now I don't know, let's see. I'm gonna switch it around this way so you guys can see the back end. But I'm taking the bottom of the apple and I'm just splitting them open a little bit so it looks like the ladybug's wings and raising the two middle ones up a little bit. And the next step, super simple. Try not to lick the peanut butter off your fingers. I have crunchy peanut butter because that's my favorite kind, but any peanut butter works and you can always substitute if you have any allergies you can substitute it for any type of butter like tiff you were saying sunflower butter is a yep sunflower butter can be an option too there you go oh this looks so good mm. <laughs> this is the the hard part try not to get it everywhere and I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I want it to look really good. But <laughs> hey, precision is a key aspect of bobsled, and you being this a pilot, true. there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> this is very true. And I love how you had the substitute of using blueberries because you don't like raisins. Yeah. I'm sure there's some kids at home, and you guys can feel free to comment inside the comment section if you don't like raisins either. Or do you guys have any ideas of what else we could put on? I'm sure dried cranberries, craisins, that'd be pretty good. Okay. I'm licking it. I'm going to eat it later. Don't worry. So maybe if you're serving to your family, I wouldn't lick your fingers. Anyway, here's the blueberries right here. I'm going to move a little bit closer just so you guys can see a little bit better. Just Plop the blueberry right down on the peanut butter. There we go. Starting to look like a ladybug. Use your imagination. It helps. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn it back around. Raising up, splitting the wings. And now this is the hard part, I find. 
getting the antennas in without breaking them. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the paring knife and again, maybe let your parents do this part or your guardians do this part, whoever's looking after you. And I'm just making a little circle in the top of the apple just to make it a little bit easier to put the antennas in. Oh, there we go. But now I have to reassemble it. And now take a little bit more peanut butter, put it on the top. And two more blueberries. And voila, we have ladybug treats. <laughs> I love it. And Heather says it's so fun. And Cassie will have to make this later. It does look like a ladybug. It's so it cool. Does. I'm so impressed. I didn't even practice this. This is my first time. Ah, love it. Very nice. Well, everyone at home, if you guys are interested in making the ladybug recipe, we have the link right here inside of the comment box. So I want to see what your guys' ladybugs look like, and we'll talk about it a little later. Maybe they can even send some pictures or give Corey a run for her money and see yeah. how creative they can make in this ladybug. I would love to see the creativity. And I'm not the most artistic person, so I'm sure you guys could do a little bit better. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> well, even speaking of kids, like, what were some snacks that you can remember making as a kid that you liked? Oh man, well, it wasn't the most nutritious snack, but my grandma, when she used to look after us after school, we had what was, in, what was called soldiers. And we literally just took a white piece of bread. She baked it, so that was a little bit better. We put it in the toaster, put some butter on it, and we literally just cut it into four pieces, and those were our soldiers. We used to play with them, we used to do everything. We asked for them every day after school. <laughs> Our little soldier. That's so cool. That's so that is awesome. Yeah. My my yeah. dogs want a treat. I can hear them. They're pawing me and huffing at me. Uh, Come on. Uh, can we see him? Yeah. Come on. Maybe. <laughs> I know there's a lot of kids, a lot of kids at home that always ask people and athletes that are on, like, do you have any pets? Oh, this is nasty. So they're half huskies, they're palm skis. So they're half Pomeranian, half husky. There you go. I'm surprised you're not trying to get my ladybug treat. Okay. Oh, precious. <laughs> she doesn't like the cuddles as much as Stormy. <laughs> <laughs> no worries at all. Well, as you're getting them situated, speaking of like the mind and the body and, and healthy living, what are some of your like pre-raised routines and snacks that you like to eat before you, you know, get behind a bobsled and start driving? So really it depends on the time of day that we're sliding and it ranges. Like sometimes we slide at 2 p.m., sometimes we slide at 6 p.m., sometimes we slide at 9 a.m. If we're sliding at 9 a.m., it's just breakfast. It's a light breakfast. It's two eggs, half an avocado with some lime juice and some salt. I prefer pink Himalayan salt. And I just sprinkle it on and I eat that. And I always drink a glass of water in the morning before I do anything, even before my coffee. And then if I'm sliding in the daytime, it's usually an apple. It's quick. As pilots, before the sport, we're really busy. We're preparing the sled. And then we have to go for a track walk about an hour and a half or ranges an hour and a half to 45 minutes before we slide. So it's something that's easy, quick, accessible, something I can take on my track walk and just quickly eat. And then because we're moving so quickly and... The, the ride sometimes isn't quite as smooth as you hope. I don't eat a lot because I do get a little bit of motion sickness. So it's just something light, something I know I can put down and it's something nutritious and gives me a little bit of burst of energy. I think that's a great tip, especially the water before your coffee. And, you know, maybe there are some other kids that have, they get a little squeamish. Like I know me when I ride in cars, Sometimes I get a little sick, especially roller coasters, which I feel like we can compare to a bobsled a little bit. Um, I, I agree with you with, <laughs> with the motion sickness a little bit. Well, Dylan here says that um, his mom made these things called marshmallow squares. We were talking about you and your snacks with your grandmother. 
And she made them really soft. She made really soft brownies and baked the marshmallows and there was icing and basically heated them up in the microwave and they added more marshmallows. Ooh. So I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty good to me. That sounds so good. <laughs> That's a yummy dessert. I'm all about anything chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> So we always ask every athlete that's on on Tuesday what their favorite red light food is. So Corey, tell the kids at home what your favorite what your favorite red light food is. Well, well, like I just said, I'm anything chocolate, but chocolate cake is like my kryptonite. I could eat it for <laughs> breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, middle of the night, waking up and I'm hungry. I'll have a slice of chocolate cake. That's my red light food, and I know it's not good. But, oh, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. Hey, that's all right. It's whatever you want your red light to be. And mm -hmm. sometimes you need to allow yourself to have that little sweet treat. Um, yep. I'm a French fry lover. And so the kids know already that I love a good McDonald's French fry. And McDonald's is not the best. But <laughs> after, like, a hard training cycle or a competition, my go-to is French fries. So I support your chocolate cake. Thank you. I support your McDonald's French fries. I mean, <laughs> during the season anyway. Back. So, do things look a little bit different for you being home right now with everything going on and like the world being a little bit different? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. I mean, it's not for the worst, though. It allows me, so I have a big gym set up in my house, so it allows me to just focus on training 100%, and it keeps me really, like, perfectly set in a routine, which is really nice for right now. And something that I've picked up doing, so I used to sketch a lot, but now I've just gotten back into sketching, and I'm also growing my own garden, my own vegetable garden. So gardening is kind of like my little knack right now, and I just sit by my garden sometimes and just wait for the things to grow. I got a little impatient on the seeds I planted, so I planted a brand new garden full of just like little plants waiting for those to grow. So I have two massive gardens now of like lush vegetables. I just got some lettuce and kale yesterday from it. Yeah. Oh man, I don't have a green thumb, but I'm pretty sure you and some kids out there have them. And I would love to see pictures of your gardens. So you can feel free to drop them inside of the Facebook. Um, I would love to see the garden. I oh, think that's I super cool. And I appreciate people that can do that. Mm -hmm. So let's play a little game. Um, we always end Tasty Tuesday with the game. M's back. Emily. I want to play. <laughs> I'm ready for game time, you guys. <laughs> yes. So we're going to play a game of yes. And so we're going to stay in the category of green lights, which are going to be your fruits and vegetables. So I'm going to start first. I'm going to give you guys some hints. And I want to see if you guys at home can guess faster than Emily or Corey. Ooh. Okay. So. All right. So put your guesses in the comments, right? Mm-hmm. All right. And we'll give them some time because I know it takes a few minutes for those comments to come in. So, all right, Tiff, you're going to start? <laughs> yep. I'm going to start. All right. I am green and round. There's so many. Right. I know. Fruits or vegetable. Whatever comes green to your mind. Green and round. All right. All right. I can think of a couple options for sure. Same. Let's, let's give uh, let's give our kids at home a couple seconds to throw out some guesses and see. I don't know what <laughs> Tiff is guessing. Maybe green you guys can say. Let me ask another vegetable. question. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I was gonna ask it. a question. All right. So yeah, fruit or vegetable? I like that question. It is. It's a fruit. A fruit. Okay. Um, Both my options were still fruits. <laughs> bumpy or smooth? Ooh, smooth on the outside, bumpy in the middle. Huh. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. no. All right, we have a guess. Ooh, green grape. No, that's a good one, but that's not oh. it. <laughs> that's what I was thinking, McKenna. I didn't okay. Think green grape. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, anyone else have guesses? All right, what other questions do we have that can narrow it down? Um, I'm a, I can give you guys another clue if you want one. I would yes. love one. I'm a different color in the middle. So I'm but green on the, green outside. on the outside. I'm smooth. Uh, I feel like <laughs> Emily. Are you inside. are you large or small? <laughs> I am. I am large. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Any other guesses, guys? Green on the outside. Oh, yeah. I get it. Uh, <laughs> Corey, I think outside. you have one nearby. I do. Mm -hmm. I just have a piece of it. 
<laughs> I mentioned it at the beginning of the show. If you were tuned in early earlier. Oh, uh, uh, maybe. Do we have anyone? Oh. Uh. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna make a guess. Corey, can you show us what you have in the screen okay. next? To you? Oh, oh wait. Oh, oh. I think McKenna's got it. It what is a that, watermelon. <laughs> nice. Good job, McKenna. Awesome. All right. McKenna's Who's like, next? You Corey, you want to pick the next fruit or vegetable? Oh boy. Okay. Um. I didn't think this through. Let's go. It is. <laughs> it's red on the outside and it comes on a vine. <laughs> okay, hmm. are you a, are you a fruit or a vegetable? Fruit. Huh. Are there multiple of you at in the same place? Yes. <laughs> um are you big or small or could you be both you could be both maybe medium and small okay all right okay Ooh. i have some jumbo size mm. do you have seeds yes i think most of the time <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <sighs> tiff do you have a guess I was like, I might have to go with McKenna on this one. <laughs> McKenna, <laughs> McKenna guessed a great. Is that correct? Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> McKenna, I was rolling with like tomato. I was like, I was tomato? too. I was super confused by the yeah. fruit or vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> it's early for me over here. I had just woken up an hour ago. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, I think we are pretty close to out of time. Corey, any other messages to, to send to our kids at home watching? You know, during this time, during all this COVID stuff, just make sure you're having fun still. I know it's hard with your parents being like, you have to do your schoolwork, you have to go outside and play. Just make sure you're having fun doing it and just follow your passions all the time. That's all. Perfect. I think that's, that is a great way to wrap it up. And for those of you at home, you know that we always leave you with a challenge. So we want you guys to go and make your ladybug snacks. If you need to use the, the uh, recipe, you can do so. But Corey, that is a beautiful ladybug snack. I love that. Um, you can always share them with us using hashtag classroom champions, and we will give you a shout out if you do. So thanks everybody so much. Tiff, you want to wrap it up? Yeah, I want to say thank you guys so much. And every, Lori says, thanks, ladies. Um, it's definitely having a great start to the day. And like Corey said, you guys have fun, follow your passions, and we will see you guys here tomorrow. <laughs> we sure will. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.